Hey guys, it's Quirk Cyril here, back with another, you know, Ember Knights video. And continuing off where we left yesterday, or in yesterday's video, which is just doing another, you know, casual run, trying to get through all of the DLC worlds. So, starting today's video off, we're going to be using Hammer, which is otherwise known as my, like, crutch weapon. It's the weapon that kind of just has everything at the start. So, yeah, we're going to use this to try to, you know, beat the alternate worlds for the first time. So, we'll start with the weapon mods. Or hammer we're going to be going with 231 which is a defensive stance so you take less damage while you're charging the weapon volcanic rift which is your third charge attack leaves a trail of fire which is insane by the way safeguard which is whenever you defeat an enemy gain two armor and re that reduces incoming damage by one a max 15 stacks it's basically just a better bone plate so super cool and then overcharge the ultimate which is your weapon attacks can be charged longer which is like one second longer and they become overcharged getting 75 percent increased damage and uh emerald tree pretty much default i'm just gonna show you this quick uh tool tip here you guys can look over that and then yeah we're just gonna hop right into a run here on doom 16 which is four haste four onslaughts one dose and five blitz seems pretty good to me and we're going to basically just do a normal run just all alternate worlds and try to beat the game pretty much because all the other times I've beaten the game, so I, I've played quite a bit recently. I've gotten all the skill tablets, all the relic orbs, all those things for the DLC. I've just been like, you know, kind of speed running through it, not really experiencing the fights. So that's my plan here is to actually experience the fights, which then again, I probably shouldn't have thrown on uh, Blitz. But to be honest, Blitz isn't too difficult as long as you don't waste like too, too much time. In these like starting rooms. You can stack up a lot of time if you just go decently fast. Now I am going to pick up Stormpike since it is uh, a skill that I haven't seen yet, or haven't used yet. However, I, I know it's really strong and there's um, not necessarily bugs. Oh my god, we got the Stuart in like second room. What do you want me to do? I have like no damage. Actually, I'm kind of kind of destroying it to be honest. Okay, there's no way I'm getting this. There's no way. Yeah, okay. I was close. I was pretty close to getting it, but there's no way. It's so difficult. You don't have, like, the proper build yet. Alright, well, that's the entire build. We can stop picking up relics now. Um, <laughs> nah, I'm kind of joking, but at the same time, I'm not really joking. Also, wow, what is that roll? Two legendaries? I mean, they're both pretty bad, but I guess we are Doomchill. So the reason why, so nice, so you can pick up the spear, oh, okay, well I lost the spear, whatever. The reason why I said it's pretty much I can just stop picking up relics is because a single combustion stone makes this build with the hammer, aka the volcanic rift build, really, really strong. The volcanic rift build is this third charge attack that leaves that trail of fire. It does so many ticks of damage, which every single tick burns. So it's just an insane amount of DPS with a single combustion stone, and then obviously, you know, scales up with the more combustion stones you have. But that, that's pretty much why I call it my crutch build, because you need one relic, and then you have so much strength. Like, I can just decimate any enemy now. I'm not worried about time at all anymore. Like, I would have been slightly panicked, I guess. Um, if I didn't find a combustion stone there, but honestly, if I find one in like A2, A3, it would have been fine too. It, it's just like, you pick it up, you just get so much damage. Anyways, I'm gonna stop talking about a single combustion stone now, and move on to uh, the skill that I'm holding. So the skill that I'm holding is a spear, right? And it, it's pretty sick, not gonna lie. I, I haven't used it too much, but it's, it's kind of cool, because you can just pick it back up. You can throw it. So throw a spike that pierces enemies and sticks in the ground, dealing AoE lightning damage. When our storm pike is picked up, it refreshes. So it kind of just sits on the ground after you throw it, dealing AoE lightning damage. And then if you walk over and pick it up, you'll get that charge back, which is so crazy. I think that's honestly the strongest part about it. It's just that extra charge that you can get there. Also, yeah, look at this DPS I'm just dishing out to Geo. 
Like, that is solely the reason why I call this the crutch weapon. And this is pretty much default hammer, except for that one combustion stone. Like, it's just so good. Also, what's the fire starter? Do I have air? I mean, might as well, I guess. Also, might as well pick up the Kindle Blade. Kindle Blade is whenever you kill an enemy that is burning, you summon a Fire Wisp. Which means I'm just gonna get an army of wisps. For free, basically. Also, I went to the wrong room here. I should've went to the damage room, but... Uh, skill damage isn't the worst, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> Probably is the worst option I could've possibly mistaken for. Oh well, it is what it is. You win some, you lose some, I guess. Also, the wisps, since they proc fire or deal burn damage, they proc combustion stones, which is insane. Uh, let's look for the spike. Yeah, so whenever you cast a perfect storm pike, it pulls enemies. Let's see how well this works. I feel like it's going to be kind of counterproductive in our uh, current build, but honestly, it should be okay. It should still do its job. Okay, um, nothing good there. Spark ring, sure, I guess. I guess it'll help us a little bit. I don't know. All right, A1 boss fight. We're at three minutes, so not too bad. Also, I, I do think this is my favorite boss fight so far. It's just such an interesting boss fight because I would never have thought the A1 boss to have multiple phases. Like, it, it's actually mind-blowing that it has multiple phases. Uh, I would never expect it. And honestly, it's so cool. I, I love that there's a second phase. So, so much. And the second phase is actually difficult, too. If you don't have, like, this crazy DPS that I currently have, it's kind of difficult, because Bro has so many attacks where he can just, like, dish out a little bit of damage here, a little bit of damage there. Like, that attack does a surprisingly uh, pretty good amount of damage. Oh, I missed my opening for damage. Oh my god. It's also like that, like, if you're not paying attention to that attack, you can just take damage so easily. For, like, no reason. Yeah. I personally love this fight. Th this fight is probably my favorite fight. Uh, out of all the fights, even. Woo, we made the care pack. Pretty cool. We're just gonna go damage here, just slam some more damage. Yeah, we're going Infernal Best still. This is my least favorite area, once again. Um, I, I don't know if you guys know why, but I'll explain why in just a second. Uh, I guess we go Infernal Scale here. So, this is my least favorite area for kind of two reasons, but one reason is because the scariest enemy that was in the, the default A2, which is the Vanguard, they just made it scarier because now it has a trail of fire, and if you just, like, touch that trail of fire, you take 10 damage. Ridiculous. Also, there is a secret door right here, which if you get the spear directly in the middle of the target, it will open the door. And I got this with a friend already, so... I have a Relic Refiner in here, but it could have also been a um, skill selector. Yeah, secret rooms are pretty sick. So just once again to reiterate, the way you open this one is by using the spear and getting the spear on the target, like dead center. Not, not too difficult, because if you miss, you can always just go pick up the skill again. Like, once again, another cool part about this skill 
it's you just can go pick it up. You, you don't have to wait to recharge it again. You can just go pick it up, and it'll be picked up. Um, I, I think there is a timer for like some duration that lasts on the ground. Maybe not though, because it's still here, and that is where I threw it. So. Maybe it doesn't just. Maybe it's just permanently on the ground where you left it. Kind of interesting if it is. Also, damn, the wisps are actually helping out so much. I really hate buying ash in these shops, so I'm just not gonna do it. I'm just gonna move on. It's a huge ash room, because I need so much more ash. Ow, I hate that you can stab me from there. Like, I'm on the island, how are you reaching me? Come on. It's supposed to be safe. Nah, it's fine though. Realistically, there shouldn't be any safe spots on the map. Holy. That was a lot of enemies that just exploded all at once. You care about another skill upgrade? Yeah, I guess. I guess we should. I guess we should try to get the ultimate for the spear. See how good it actually is. Wow. Okay. We're pretty bad. I already pick up Stormpike. Your next skill deals 50% bonus damage. Okay. That doesn't seem too bad. I also can't remember what the ultimate was. Increase the size of the AoE lightning damage. Okay, I mean, it's something. I wouldn't necessarily call it good, but it's something. Let's just slam, slam the spear now. See how much bigger the area is? Okay, that's not too bad, to be honest. It could have been much worse. Also, I kind of just face tanked both the attacks that she uh, threw at me. Slightly unlucky, but... Honestly, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay, that one kind of hurt. Not want to take that damage. Come here. Stop running from me. <laughs> uh, move speed. We'll, get, we'll take move speed now. I'm starting to feel the uh, the differential of uh, move speed being too great. Click the food, make sure we get full value, and the wisp down the rest of the enemies. Amazing. I feel like wisps are pretty underrated, or at least I underrate them a lot, I feel like. They're just such a, a good source of, like, excess damage. I was gonna hook that meat, but then I realized I'm just going to Healing Fountain anyways, so there's no reason not to. Also, I'm gonna try to show you guys something that I just recently learned, and I don't know if you guys will know this or not, because I think it's only this area, but maybe it's in other areas too. Um, once again, I need to clear the room before I can show you. Uh... Okay, so, damn. I can't show you, I just broke the pot. So, what I was going to show you is, you can interact with the pot, like press E or wherever your interact key is on it, and it'll pop out some of the some of the gold, and then um, you can break it and get more gold out of it. So I don't know if there, that's like a way to get more gold, or if it's the same amount of gold, it's just now split up, I, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to test, so... Yeah, I don't know, but it, it's kind of interesting to see that you can actually interact with the, the pots in A2. It's just something I figured out and thought it was interesting. Oh no, I took 15 damage. No! It's, all, it's literally all good. It's only armor. And after we defeat this boss anyways, we're just gonna heal up, so... Not a big deal to take damage here. Like, at all. Yep. 
Bro, combustion stones and volcanic rift mode on hammer. It's so crazy. It's so strong. It's actually just amazing. It's it's one of my favorite builds. It's so easy too. Because you have damage reduction when you're charging the uh, the weapon. So realistically, if you do, you know, like greed out, you're still gonna take like 35% less damage, so <laughs> it's fine really. Alright, so yep, we're going to Akamura. This is my least favorite area so far. Um, I'm sure you'll find out why throughout the run. Yeah, we might have to take Banner Progression. Yeah, okay, we're taking Banner Progression. This is one of the curses that I still need to cleanse, so we're going to take it. Banner Progression, though. Curse. Your skills that have upgrades are locked. And the benefit is whenever you defeat a boss or mini boss, it drops a skill selector. It's kind of dope. Um, yeah, you're going to soon realize why I hate this area. Um, those crows are crazy. You get too many in the same room, it is absurd. Uh, also, those were all really, really bad relics, in my opinion. None of them helped my build whatsoever. Damn it, I broke it. I was gonna try to interact with it. See if it works. But, uh, oh well. Are there crows? No. Weird. I don't want either of those. We're gonna go with wisps, I guess. It looks... Good, I guess. I don't know. We got Fire Wisp. Big Fire Wisp. Seems pretty strong. I love it when Praxis uh, decides to spawn a gem for us. It was really cool. Um, if you guys don't know what happened there in that interaction, it's he was going to enhance an enemy, but we killed the enhanced enemy uh, faster than he could enhance it. So then he just summoned the gem that it was supposed to uh, drop when we defeat the enhanced version of it. Alright, uh, yeah, let's roll once. What is this? Oh, we only have enough for it, but while you have armor, you heal for each enemy defeated. That's really cool. That is really, really cool. I think that's a pretty strong relic. And it has levels? Yeah, that seems pretty strong. Pretty strong if you have armor, that is. It, it sounds like it'll pair really well with bone plates, because you'll just have armor. Um, when you kill enemies, so maybe that synergizes really well. Maybe you gain armor before um, the relic like checks, I guess. So then, even if you didn't have armor, but then you kill the enemy, you'll gain that armor and then you'll heal because you technically had armor. Like maybe it works that way. Um, if it does, that is that's crazy. Then you don't ever really have to have armor. You'll just heal because you're gonna gain an armor at the end of the room. Or when you kill your last enemy, and thus heal you. Or I worded that really badly. I'm gonna try to reword it. So it's like bone plate gives you an armor, right? Whenever you kill an enemy or defeat an enemy, and this one is whenever you defeat an enemy with armor, you heal one, right? So maybe if you have bone plates and that relic. Wow, this what? What is that? It just destroyed me. Now I'm gonna destroy him. What was that? Bro just slammed me like four times. I swear I dodged at the right times. I swear. Um, honestly, I'm just gonna skip this. Actually... Yeah, no, we're gonna take Chakram. Um, my, my point about that was... If you gain an armor because you killed an enemy from Bone Plate, and then... You're supposed to heal if you have armor. Does it proc the armor gain before the heal? Or does it proc the heal before the armor gain? If that makes sense. 
and or is it simultaneously therefore there is no benefit that I do not know it would be a good thing to test though it's also very interesting oh my god I did not want to get hit by that that's so unlucky I should probably just oh they just cooked the apple probably they're getting max health oh my god Bro, these guys are crazy. These guys are absolutely crazy. Uh, that's another reason why I just dislike this area. Like, a lot. There's just so many enemies, like, if you get swarmed by them, you're just gonna take damage. Like, there's no way to not take damage. Also, Offering Pit. Is there anything that we don't care about? I mean, I guess. I guess we don't care about this. I guess we don't care about Charge Trinket. We don't really care about Spark Ring. And Doom Shell's kind of bad, too. There's a lot of better Legendaries, so I think we just toss all four. Uh, okay, Spirit Shelter I'm down for. Creature's Bond isn't that bad. Steel Greaves is pretty bad. Guard Scepter is also pretty bad. But, uh, oh well. It is what it is, to be honest. And for the final reason why I hate this area, this fight right here. This is arguably the hardest fight in the game. Um, I would love to say objectively, but I know it's not objective. It is strictly a skill issue on my behalf. Um, but it's, somebody's got to hate this fight, and why not it be me? Okay, phase one done. Now this is the phase where I'm probably gonna end up taking a ton of damage for like no reason. Or what feels like no reason. Unless I just dodge perfectly. There's always that possibility of me just being becoming a god real quick. Uh probably not though. I'm probably not going to just become a god. Really hurt. Ow. It also really hurt. Oh. What is happening right now? Oh my god. We pulled that one out by like. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know how we pulled that one off. I'm gonna be honest. I was so close. Finally cleanse this curse that was, has been lagging me every time I took it, I would just die. Um, yeah. I'm done with that, I guess. Chakram upgrade 1's pretty sick. Increase crit chance of Chakram by 10%, and then when you crit, you freeze. Pretty solid upgrade. Ooh. Okay. Refreshing orb. Whenever you defeat an enemy, they have a chance to drop a refresh orb. Refreshing both your skills. Cool down six seconds. Drop chance ten percent. Wow, wait, this is kinda cracked. This is kinda cracked. I wonder if there's levels. If there's levels, it's kind of interesting. Ten percent chance you say. So every ten enemies, every six seconds roughly. It's pretty interesting. I'm curious on how strong this will be in like a speedrunner's build. I say once again, yeah, I'm a speedrunner at heart. I speedrun occasionally, so uh, everything always goes back to is it speedrun worthy? In my head at least. Yeah, pretty sick. Alright. Simulon, aka the alternate A4.
Okay. Laugh all you want, buddy. Still gonna defeat you. Another golden Stuart! We got another golden Stuart! This time we have the damage, we can just hit him. We just gotta hit him. Get golden Stuart down. Let's go. I took so much damage there, but it's fine. Also, we got a refreshing orb. Why? We don't need it. Now you're running a build that, like, wants it. We're just gonna take Juicy Opal, honestly. Get some value out of those. And then, yeah. Hologram Banana. Huge. <laughs> Alright, let's move on. <laughs> I'm totally not greeting for uh, max health. Definitely not. That's like psychopathic behavior right there. They do all of these drop bananas or drop food? Oh my god, they all drop food. That is so much healing. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. I was not expecting all of them to actually drop stuff. My stuff, I mean, healing. It's so much. I get it, this area is kind of difficult, but holy... Not expecting that much. Uh, refinement. What, is, what am I going to refine? We got Combustion Stone and, like, Opal. I mean, sure, I guess. I guess it works. Combustion Stone is, like, a lot more damage. Uh, and Opal is just for uh, excess healing when we find a healing fountain. I don't think we care about creatures' bonds, like, at all. So we're gonna ignore that, and honestly just not upgrade anything else. Keep our 200-ish gold. Oh yeah, another reason why this build is so strong, because it just, like, got brought up again, kind of thing, is combustion stones, or in other words, relics that deal damage, uh, deal damage through the Praxis shields. If you're finding any enhanced enemies with that purple shield around them, any relic that deals damage, in this case, combustion stone, that damage is dealt through the shield and not reduced whatsoever. So, it's a really fast way to deal a lot of damage to enemies that you wouldn't normally be able to deal that much damage to. Also, Hammer for the win, Hammer Combustion Stone for the win, you see how fast I destroyed that mini boss? That is not okay. Not okay at all, actually. We're just gonna take Chakram Upgrade too, because we don't really care about the, the general upgrades here. We just want the, um, the ultimate for Chakram. Akram becomes so much stronger with uh, the ultimate. It just refreshes then on like every hit. So much refresh. Great, and what is the other one? Health? Okay, we're just going crit. We have 200 selling max health. We do not need more max health. And if we do, we can just smack all the apples that are in like every single room. I don't know why there's so much healing in the alternate worlds. Oh, I went to the wrong room. No, there's a shop in the other one. Uh, that's kind of sad. You know what? It's okay. Like I said earlier, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Sometimes you go too fast and choose the wrong option. Alright, once again, another Ash room here. We should be able to deal damage straight through the shield and not have to destroy any of the crystals. We can just deal so much damage through the shields. Like, look at that. I should not be dealing that much damage through the shields. That's not really okay. Alright, healing fountain. I don't have to use too much of the healing fountain. We used 10 and we're at max health already. Healed the pull. Very sick. Get a timeshare and beautiful white spare. Right here. Great. Yeah, <laughs> these screens actually show some pretty cool things. 
there's a there's a meme in it, uh, like the live rackling reaction. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I keep moving too fast for it, but it's pretty funny. Loaded up the program of the boss. Pretty sick. Error bite. So this boss fight is pretty easy once you understand it, which in this case, you just have to destroy these um, fuses, I guess you could call them, uh, that pop up here and there. And these wisps help out so much. Also, oh my god, I forgot how fast they are. They are so fast. We can dodge those lasers real easy. He does pick up the pace here in a little bit, so... Oh my god, I forgot, they're just instant. I'm gonna use this, try to freeze the enemies, try to make them easier to dish to out damage to. Uh, here we're going to try to dodge it again, which can't though, that is so difficult to dodge. Yeah, you can stop this phase, please. I don't think I can hit you, I don't think I can manually hit you, like, ever. I could be wrong, but... Right? Yeah, I can't manually hit him. Okay, so there is health bars on the, the drones. They go uh, left to right, and then up and down. Dude, like, give up already. You've hit, like, two shots on me. Okay, there we go. Clean it up pretty nicely. It's another cool fight though, it's just like a, a pretty slow fight, which is the issue. Issue for me at least, I don't like super slow fights. Like, like, it's just like, there's points in this fight in particular, where you're just kinda dodging. And it's, it's the same for some of the other fights, but it's kinda just not my, uh, my liking. I'd like to be able to deal damage to them at any given point. Um, also, yeah, nice. We unlocked Apprentice Spellbook. Pretty sick, actually. Alright, we can move on. 30% crit. Not bad. How many apples are in here? I feel like there's a lot of apples in here. Uh, four apples. Four apples. Wow. That is... That is a lot of apples. For free, that is. Yeah, we gotta do the we gotta do the architects fight. We have to do it. Alright, we're just gonna skip through all of the animations. Because there's there's no like important cutscenes necessarily. Or at least not there. Um Wow. I got hit by a... Oh, it was probably that guy who rooted me. Yep, it's that guy. Ow. Not too happy about that, I'm gonna be honest. I to really got hit there. Okay, so there's a, a massive Rachnid. And what is this other guy? This other guy is the Fire Witch, I wanna call it. I, I don't know its actual name. The massive Rackling down. Fire Witch dude is also down. Huge. I should probably just cook all the food and heal off a bit. Oh, well. Unlucky. Look at it. 
Eat it. Leave all the moose food. Why not? And move on. Oh, solid. Max health room, uh, got the extra gems? No. Yeah, that was a pretty interesting room. I was expecting some champions to spawn, and there just wasn't any champions. Kind of confusing, to be honest. I really thought there was champions in that room. But there's two elites, so maybe maybe they misspawned, or maybe it's just a different type of room, different waves. No, I'm comparing it to the defaults, um, Nether so. Obviously, things can be very different from the default nether to uh, this nether. You never know. Um, void amulet. I don't think I care about that. I think I should probably take bone plate though. More, more armor. We need a heal. Not really. Might as well take it though. Like, what else am I gonna do? Nothing. There's nothing to do. Okay, the scariest enemy. I actually didn't take any damage. Um, wow. Not like permanent damage. Not health damage, I guess. Probably just armor damage. Not too, too much of it. Oh, there's a golden rock up there. Wait. Wait a second. Can get gold and nether. Uh, okay. Alright, this is obviously not the default nether, but you get gold in here. It's, enemies don't drop gold in this area. Which makes sense pre um, pre updates where they added looping. Because when this was just like the last area, also, oh my god, wait. That's a A4 champion. Hello? Is it actually still the A4 champion? So holy, those wisps just decimated that guy. So much damage. Sure, take steel graves. I I don't care. I don't think any of those relics are gonna help us out in any like meaningful way. I think we're just set. I think we're just chilling. Okay, this should be another. Oh my god. Yeah, see, two, two elites instead of champions. I swear this is a champion room. Hmm. Weird. Weird, 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 weird. Alright, well. You know what time it is? It's time to go fight Praxis. Also, yeah, the cutscenes are uh, probably not going to play. Yeah, I already got to Praxis once, so all the cutscenes are not playing, which is totally okay. Just I can't show you guys the cutscenes, which I'm sure you guys can experience it for yourselves, if you have the DLC, that is. This is a super cool fight, but I think this fight, or... The architect should have way more health. I think it should be a way more lengthy fight. Um, however, obviously, I guess I can choose how much health he has by, you know, turning on difficulty modifiers. But, um, yeah, I, I just feel like this fight should be really long. Also, wow, I got stunned right then and there. Come on, bro. Bruh. Why are you... What? Why do you do that attack? So confused. I thought he was only supposed to do that attack when we were in A2. Okay, I guess I'm wrong, but what is, what is that? Why is he just like. Oh, so, okay, never mind, never mind. I, I understand, I understand, I understand how it works. He channels the power of some boss and then uses its power. Or so, that's what it looked like.
All right, well, we're on the last phase. Like, I feel like I shouldn't have this much DPS. Obviously, I have to keep going back to the fact that this is just hammer DPS with Combustion Zone. Like, it just is this strong. So if you want to get your first win, um, honestly, you should use these mods. The 2 3 one on the Ember, or not Ember Tree, on the Weapon Mod list. Uh, for Hammer, it's just so strong with a single Combustion Zone. You get so much DPS. And then with level 5, you just have so much more. Anyways, yeah, that's that's the end. That is beating Architect. Or the final boss, really. I do think this boss fight should be a little longer. Whether it's just like way more health to the Architect, so each phase takes way longer. Or maybe it's like there's a third phase or like a fifth phase where now you actually fight the Architect and it's like one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Overall, I do love the design of that fight. Going to each different world seems pretty sick. And, uh, yeah, so that's that's the end. Just make sure we don't go to Endless, because I do not want to do Endless right now. Yeah, victory in 22 minutes. We beat the Blitz timer. That's pretty much all you can ask for. Uh, Doom 16. There is no um, Doom 15 plus boss fights for the alternate worlds. But honestly, I think it's fine like that. I don't think there needs to be a harder difficulty set amount of orbs to reach to get to another boss fight. I don't think that's needed here. I think it fits perfectly fine the way it is. And yeah, let's just check out the build, I guess, real quick before we end it here. So we ended with 308 health, which is a lot of max health. 75 damage, quite, quite good. I mean... It, I don't know, could have been closer to 100, but it's better than 50, I guess, right? Like, there's a compromise. Skill damage means nothing in this build. I rarely use my skills. 30% crit, that's quite high crit. 144% move speed. A little low compared to where I want to sit, which is usually 150 to 160. But overall, really strong. And then once again, level 5 combustion zone. All you can ask for in this build, really. Uh, Kindle Blade also popped off. You can see that the Wisps did so much damage. I, I even let the Wisps just finish off the Architect at the end. And we got Boon of Progression done. So we cleansed the Bane of Progression. So now that's another curse that I have completed now. And didn't use Spirit Shelter. there. Honestly, the other relics aren't too crazy. UC Opal's nice to have. So you can heal more off of Healing Fountains. But honestly, not necessary. Yeah, uh, I think it's a fun build. If you guys want to do, you know, try out this build, go for it. It's pretty simple, as I said. It's basically just combustion zones with these weapon mods here, which is, I believe, 231 on the weapon mod list. Uh, yeah. There's nothing else to really say. I, I love the DLC so far. I honestly can say that A3 is my least favorite area. Uh, aka Akamura. I, I hate that area so much. Even though that area does have a turtle, and I do love the the design of the turtle, I just I can't be bothered. That area is just so much harder than it feels like it should be. Anyways, yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll be posting pretty much every day for the next like week I feel like because it's just so much fun to play Ember Knights right now. So yeah, if you want to see more content like this and you want to see like some tips and tricks and maybe you know just how to unlock certain secret rooms and things like that, just stay posted. You know, you could subscribe so you can see all the videos I upload in the next, you know, couple days, week. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> I'll stop yapping and let you guys get to your next video. But yeah, once again, thank you guys for watching. It really does mean a lot to see that you guys get to the end of videos, or even enjoy them for that sake. Uh, I always try to keep it pretty informative. Like in this video, I showed you how to open the alternate A2 secret room for that uh, skin. I don't know what color it is, because I, I forgot, but I figured how to do that. So that was pretty informative there. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions about the DLC. I will answer as many questions as I can if I have the answers. And if I don't have the answers, I'll relay it to a developer and ask them. Personally, that is. 
and that'll get back to you. So once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good rest of your day, night, or whatever time you're viewing this.